YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. Happy October. It's actually only Friday here, but by the time you watch this, it will be October 2nd. And I thought, what better time to make a really cute candle for Halloween that I happened to see on Pinterest. Now, if you're not a Halloween fan, no worries. This might give you some general ideas about how to successfully make candles. So when I first began making candles as part of my Bath and Body Works business, I'm like, well, how hard can it be? You melt the wax and voila. And y'all, there's a lot more to it than that. So if you're very new to all this and you're not sure what the best wax to get is, I can tell you that I use a comfort wax, which is a, a paraffin type wax. And I also will sometimes use um, a soy wax. And this is all I have left. <laughs> and I may not burn this candle, or I might, I don't know. I've tried to really limit my soy exposure because of my soy allergy. But primarily my soy allergy has to do with ingesting soy, not so much, you know, in a candle form. But I still try to avoid it, a whole bunch of exposure. So let's say... I don't want to deal with, um, you know, knowing how much color in I can put in it or how much fragrance I can put in it. There's a very simple thing you can do. And Dollar Tree has the tall candles in the glass jar and you can simply put that in the top of a double boiler and you can melt down that wax. If you're careful, you can even reuse the wick. So today I'm going to talk about the particular type of wax that I'm using and why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. So the first supply you're going to need, believe it or not, is, and I don't know if you can see it, is a Pyrex bowl. And this is a two cup bowl. I guess that's a mar mark in the bowl. Um, I have a couple of them because I want to make a couple candles. That you can find any day of the week over at the Goodwill. <laughs> that's where I got all my bowls from. The nice thing about Pyrex, of course, is it can withstand the heat. You don't want to just make a candle in anything because it is going to flame and you don't want to have an explosion or a meltdown of your whole candle holder type thing. So I don't use metal because of the heat conduction and I also don't use anything plastic. A good thing to use, like let's say you, you're like, I want to make candles, but I don't want to do the Halloween thing. You can do them in mason jars, like a pint mason jar. I make a lot that way. So that is choice number one. I got to check on the stove here and then we'll get on to number two. All right, the second thing that you're gonna to need to do is measure out your wax. Now I have found through lots of experience, I'm gonna give you the measurements for two pint jar candles or two two cup Pyrex bowls. And you can find these again, any kind of thrift store should have them. Um, this is a picture I use only for candle making. You can see it's a little stained and I have measured out 22 ounces of wax. I found that to be just perfect for what I'm making. Now, I've never done this project before, so it might be a little too full, but that's okay because we can always pour it off into a mason pint jar or a quarter pint jar. Half pint or quarter pint. <laughs> So what you want to do, let's swing over here to the stove. And guys, you can use an old coffee can. Um, there's so many different things that you can use. Just know whatever you use, you don't want to use again for food. Just saying. Those Pyrex bowls are things that I use in my Bath and Body product making but where you're going to melt your wax and add the color and add the fragrance, you definitely want it to be something that you solely for candle making. So you can use a double boiler. I do have a double boiler now, but I generally just pop it into the water and I stir it. And again, guys, whatever you stir with is now a wax only type utensil, if you will. So let's let this start melting and then I'll swing you back around we'll talk about how to prepare your container. So back to my original discussion that, you know, I thought, what's hard about it? You just melt the wax. 
different types of wax can hold different amounts of fragrance oil or essential oil. If you over oil it, depending on the type of wax, what can happen is you'll get pooling. Have you ever opened a candle in a store and you see those dots of oil on the top? Probably over oiled or over fragranced oiled may not be essential oil. Well, is that a problem because it looks a little different? Well, it can be because that can cause spit and sputter. So it can increase a risk factor of somebody getting burned or catching something on fire. <laughs> That's never happened to me. But also I'm very careful not to over fragrance anything. Another consideration is, is there's two basic types of wick. Are you going to use what's called a cotton wick that you see in most candles? Or are you going to use a wood wick that crackles? Now, because we're going to be adding something that I'm sure isn't flame resistant, I'm going to use a cotton wick because it doesn't flicker as much and I'm not so worried about catching the decor that we're going to be putting in it on fire. So I saw this on Pinterest. I thought I could totally make that. So there is a consideration about how much fragrance oil. Third thing to consider, um, you can't just melt the wax and put the fragrance oil in piping hot. It does not assimilate well and you'll get more pooling. So you wanna let it cool back to about 140 degrees. So I'm roasting here. <laughs> let me get reorganized. We'll decide on wick and style and I'll give you a little hint about what we're going to make. I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, if you watched my shop with me video, one of the things I purchased, and yes, I only gave a dollar for it instead of a dollar of a quarter and a quarter. I got these at the DG, but you can buy a set of, I think, four at um, Dollar Tree for like a dollar and a quarter. So what we're going to be making here is super cute. Come on, buddy. Is we're going to be creating a little skeleton in a hot tub. Now, how cute is he going to be sitting there? I got to figure out how to make him sit there. Oops. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, we may have to pop his legs off. God love him. In fact, let's, yeah, we'll just take his legs off. And then he does have a little hook because this is a garland, but we're going to use that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make him a little towel wrap for his head. So it's like a spa thing, right? So what I did is I went through my old and raggedy dish towels and things I used just for like cleaning. And I'm just going to cut myself a section of this. And I am going to get my skeleton all ready before, try to find an area that's not stained. <laughs> before I put him in. So you just need an itty bitty bit. So I am going to actually hot glue, whoopsie, the towel to his head. I'm not showing you very well. So let me get a cleaner square without such raggedy edges. And then over on the stove, you can probably hear our water has come up to a bowl. And I just need to stir that wax. So I have my little square here and I will be cutting some of it away. I am using my Gorilla Glue hot glue gun and I'm going to just glue the towel to his head. So you can get all fancy. You can distress your skeleton, you know, like to a darker color, um, you know, put some watered down brown paint on him, whatever suits your spooky. Now I want to do a little twist on this. Let's let that kindly dry. But I thought he needed a, a turban. As I saw so many of them, I thought they were really cute. So let's just glue the fabric. I'm just going to fold it to a point here. And then here. that glue glob off. There we go. And then we're going to fold it over. Man, that's bigger than his head. All right. And we'll fold him down. Woo! And there you have it. How cute is that? Can y'all see? Is it focusing? I can't tell. 
So we'll trim off the little glue strings. We'll let that dry. I've been able to turn the heat off for the candles and I'm just letting the last few dribs and drabs melt away. Let me clear up this portion of the mess and then we will get on to measuring the temperature, talking about fragrance and color additives. I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, y'all, our wax is at 187 degrees. It's all melted. I've taken it out of the water bath. And here's a little tip for you. Keep your hot water because it's part of the cleanup process and you never wanna put any melted wax down your drain for obvious reasons. So outside it goes to an area you don't mind. And with it being soy wax, I'm not terribly concerned and I'll keep it out of reach of the girls because it will have a fragrance in it. So now it's time to decide what type of wick you want. And so there's basically two types of wicks, as I said. This type, which is a cotton wick being covered in wax, or you can also buy wood wicks. Now the wood wicks sit in a little metal clip so we could do that. The reason I'm not going to do that is because I just don't want to catch my skelly on fire. <laughs> the other thing you need to know is how many wicks for the proper diameter of your bowl. So a jar, like a pint jar, one wick is adequate. For anything of this diameter, which is almost double a regular mouth pint jar, I'm going to use two wicks. So super simple guys if you have the supplies now some people like to use melted wax on the ends because they they feel it provides an adequate seal i do not mine always end up falling over and part of the way a candle burns so well wow i don't know maybe maybe that better would just be one yep i think i'm gonna change my mind guys and go with one um part of the way a a candle burns well is having your wicks straight and centered. Okay, what did I do? So I have these little things that you put on one, if I can find them. Hold up, Okay, guys. if it would have been a bug, it would have bit me. <laughs> so I have these little metal bars that have a notch in it. And what you do, oh no, it's gonna be too narrow, is you can put your wick through the notch. So these are too small. So plan B is you can use like a skewer. So that's what we'll be using. You wanna keep it as centered as you possibly can. These are high quality wicks. I'm not terribly worried about them falling over and they are settled down at the bottom tightly. Now, we have our two heads. I've kind of bent the legs and they may break completely in two, that's fine. Now you wanna decide, do you want any color? And guys, I think for a bath, I'm gonna say no color for this particular application, but you can put color in. And let's go over and check our temperature and we'll decide on what fragrance oil and how much. For the particular type of wax that I am using today, y'all get tired of just talking to my neck, don't you? I know that I can add two and three quarter ounces of fragrance oil without having pooling or it being excessive. So how do you know how much fragrance oil you can add? My best recommendation to you is to Google um, what is the maximum amount of fragrance oil that can be added per ounce to X type wax. Now someone's going to ask me, can you use beeswax? And let me just share with you, this is not a beeswax project because beeswax will just burn straight through to the bottom. So it's not going to burn like a candle would. So let's go ahead. Mm, I've decided on espresso oil today. Oh, it's one of my favorites. And we're going to put in not that much. <laughs> 2.75 ounces, or 2.70, oh, that's close enough. Five one hundredths won't make a difference of this delicious fragrance oil. Now you see it has a bit of color to it, so it may discolor our wax a little bit. So let's talk about adding color. Um, you can add candle safe color. It comes in a couple ways. You can get liquid, so let me show you that. 
and I order my supplies from Candle Science. So this is blue. Blue might be kind of cute. Should we do one colored? Okay, let's see. I have ivory, uh, red, red would be, uh. And let me tell you, my <laughs> fingers are gonna be red for weeks. This stuff is so hard to get off. It is a very permanent dye, so we're not gonna use any dye. But you could, and I might after I pour one. We'll see. Um, I think I even have black. One thing to know about soy base wax, it's burgundy, is it does not color as deeply. It's a little cloudier. So I think I'm just gonna leave it ivory colored. So it'll match Skelly over here. So I've got this all ready. Let me red this up a little bit. By then our wax should be cooled down. We're at about 170. I do want it to get down to 140 before we pour. And that will also help not have those tunnels around the wick that I know you've all seen when you go to the store to purchase a candle. Yeah, I just happened to think of something else while we're waiting. Glitter. So I love me a good sparkly candle. <laughs> However, please be sure you're using candle safe glitter and it should be advertised and specified as such. Again, I'll link candlescience.com in the description box below. Um, they have everything. I just have not had a need for it. The other thing you can do, let's say you're not into the Halloween thing, you think this is dorky. <laughs> this has been really fun and I've done this a few times. Make a candle in a pint jar and do the candy corn colors. So do part of the wax, you need two pitchers really for it. Part of the wax stays like an ivory whitish color, part of it's orange and part of it's yellow. So it just takes a little bit of dye and layer it up. Pardon me. If you are gonna do a layered candle, you always wanna let the previous layer set or else you'll get commingling of colors. I don't happen to have any of those in stock. They're, they're fun and they sell very, very well. You can buy fragrance oil that's candy corn scented. You can use essential oils that doesn't have to smell like candy corn, but that's a fun and easy one to do. And again, guys, you can use remelted dollar store candles, dollar tree candles for sure. All right, I'm gonna check the temp again. All right, y'all, we're at 140 degrees. I'm gonna add in my espresso fragrance oil, give a stir. And then y'all, I ended up using some hot glue just to prop the skeleton up. My problem I'm running into is he's not really jointed. So trying to get him to stay where I want him has not been easy. So I'm gonna pour, not all, but most of the wax and we can reheat Oh, I think this is gonna look so cute, y'all. Can you see? Here we go. So what I'm going to do, prop up my wick, is let this hang out for a little bit, start to solidify. And then for the legs, guys, I don't know, I'm gonna try bending them and sticking them in kind of like this, but we'll, we'll see if it will hold. Um, I think it's stinking cute. I have a little rubber duck here. <laughs> and I'm gonna put in one of them. And uh, yes, now I have blue to match the red on my fingers. So let's let this sit up. You see how it's becoming cloudy. It looks like um, he or she is taking a bath in tea. <laughs> so the color would have kind of muted that a little bit, but it will dry opaque. So even though you can see like the wick base and such, it, you won't be able to once it actually hardens up. So let's let these guys hang out for a little bit and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like for the final part. All right, y'all, as promised, I've inserted the legs. So what I did here is I just bent them and the wax has hardened up quite a bit, but once you break through the top coating, it's gonna leave a little bit of a hole and we will just backfill that. And we're gonna put our little ducky here. I've got the wax reheating. You can see it's turned like a creamy, opaque color. So you can't see any of the wick holding or anything like that. 
So I'm gonna let this second batch of wax heat up. I'm gonna pour it, backfill those holes, and we will let it set up and then trim our wick in about 24 hours when it's good and soft. All right, now let's top off our skellies here. And I'm gonna start by just pouring the wax where the holes are for the legs so that that will solidify. And I think these are just adorable. I'll make the, okay, that would be full enough. <laughs> My poor little ducky is about to drown. I may have to pull him back out here. Oh, well, I'm making a wreck of it, aren't I? So let's get our little ducky back out. I'm going to let that set up a minute. And uh, let me grab a paper towel. <laughs> Give him a little wax bath. So once this sets up, we can put the duck on it. And it does take a while. I like to leave it 24 hours before I trim the wick so it looks a little bit ridiculous right now with this super long wick. Um, it's easier to keep it straight and centered if you leave the wick long, in, just in my opinion. So we're gonna let this last bit set up. And I wanted to share with you before I come back with a final thought. How am I gonna clean this out? The first thing I like to do is take a paper towel and just get the lion's share of the wax out. And you can just dispose of it in the trash can. The second thing I like to do is just to put some boiling water, and I have some over here that I made for melting the wax. So let's Carefully, because I know myself, we're going to pour this hot water in. And let it kind of hang out for a minute. Take it outside, dump it in an area where, you know, animals won't be tasting it if it, <laughs> it smells good. Don't know if my girls like espresso or not. But then you can just wipe it out and it's ready for use again. That simple. Just remember, don't, don't put that down the drain. All right, guys, I'll bring you back for some final thoughts. I hope you've had as much fun as I have making these lovely candles. Guys, it's still a little soft, but how cute is that? So I'm just going to let them set up. And by tomorrow, they'll be ready to burn. So drop me a comment below. Are you team spooky skeleton candle or are you more the candy corn candle type? You know, both are just fine. I plan to see you all a little bit later this week. <sighs> Lots of fun fall projects going on here. But until I see you again, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care.